area of our lives every week. We are excited today because, man, today if you have a question about relationships, uh -huh. if you want to hear from some of the best, and when you hear their background, you will understand how, uh, why they are called Married by God. Um, but before we get into that, we first want to say that this show is brought to you by Xfuse. Xfuse is a privately held global health and wellness company that's headquartered in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, with offices in, in over 12 countries, including Japan, all of Southeast Asia, Australia, C Canada, and more. Um, their mission is to provide superior health and wellness products at great affordable prices, while also offering an awesome business opportunity. Um, so if you are interested in either one, you can inbox us on our, our Alishane page or send an email to Alishane. 6970 at gmail.com. I know that Shane and I have been on those products since July and uh, have made a tremendous difference in our lives. So, we want to welcome to the show, um, well, I mean, I call them collectively married by God, but they are actually husband and wife, Ronald and Rachel Harris. And since I'm still getting over my 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 cold, I'm going to have Shane read their bio for us. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit better right now, but... Uh, Married by God was formally established in November of 2014, but has been a culture and ideal for Ronald and Rachel Harris for over 10 years. Married by God believes that all marriages that are founded on God and guided by His blueprint will not fail. They are the hottest marriage coaches in Atlanta, motivational speakers, ministers, and authors. Married by God is all about strengthening and uplifting marriages in new and innovative ways. Ronald and Rachel Harris have been best friends for 21 years, together for 16 years and married for over 10 years. They are the proud parents of four amazing boys ranging from the ages of 14 to 4. They believe in family and the covering and guidance that marriage provides to families and children. Ronald and Rachel are the authors of the book, Married by God, God's Blueprint to a Successful Marriage. They believe that there is only one way to do marriage successfully, and that is God's way. Ronald and Rachel are on a mission to help couples all over the world live out marriage in the fullness of the way God designed it. You can catch them on their live video feeds every Monday for MBG Monday via Periscope and Facebook Live. Also subscribe to MBG at MarriedByGod.org. Well, welcome, 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 Ronald and Rachel Harris. Hi, you, hello. For well, those of you that are watching on Facebook Live or on YouTube Live, you can see why I was surprised they have children at, at, at 14 years when they look so young. So, but we are excited because um, we actually got to meet formally uh, when we were, um, when, when we had our show at Nancy's Pizza mm -hmm. in Midtown Atlanta. And just maybe four days later, yes. we just said that under my, my Facebook memories, I had shared their book last year mm -hmm. this time. And I thought, Last year, I was like, well, that sounds very, very interesting. And then I got so excited. I was like, oh, I know them. So tell us how, um, because when we met um, at Nancy's, you just, this kind of just started to happen, mm -hmm. right? So tell us how that happened, like the whole Married by God movement. Well, well, I think um, it kind of just like, we always say it just happened, but it started from just conversations that me and Ronald always have. I always like to interview him and ask some relationship questions from a male perspective or just, you know, um, just about, we always talk marriage and relationships. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of started there and he said, well, let's record ourselves and kind of put it out there because we mm -hmm. um, have a lot of friends that ask us different marriage questions, you know, things like that. So we started recording ourselves and putting it on social media. Mm -hmm. And we started getting a lot of hits on it. And then um, we had a friend, um, Charmaine, that invited us to a blog talk radio she had. Mm -hmm. And um, we did an interview on her show. We had our book getting ready to come out and she just asked us some questions and it kind of took off from there That's wow awesome. I mean awesome. now and I I always like to hear hear a male's point of view um, because I think sometimes as women we we have this story forming in our head that doesn't really exist like we just think you know because I know you feel this way and I know and I know and it's so far out so how did you feel when she started to ask you just questions in general and was, was there ever a time where she wasn't really trying to hear your answer? Yes, a lot of times. <laughs> um, I think because we was friends first, we always had casual conversations. Mm -hmm. And so when we started doing it, it was just like our casual conversations. Yeah. 
I mean, wow. any question she asked, uh, you know, it was a straightforward answer. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't really know how to sugarcoat stuff, which is no. what I kind of really <laughs> love about him. I, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a love and hate relationship yeah. with right. his inability to sugarcoat. Yeah. I mean, but you get the truth. You get, you know, you get the truth of things. So. Raw, raw. So, and so now, <laughs> when you start... <laughs> raw the raw. Uh, yes. Well, and, and you know what? I, I really That's think sometimes um, to have a successful marriage, mm -hmm. you have to be able to kind of hear... If if you can't not hear the raw truth from your partner mm -hmm. in life yeah. and everything, mm -hmm. then the world will just crush you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so, so from the videos, then the, 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 did the book just birth from just were people asking you questions online? Were they inboxing you guys? Yeah, the book came from um, once we were on um, Evolution with Charmaine. It came. She uh, she kind of spoke it into existence on her show, right. and she was like, "I see you guys doing a book," and we were like, "Yeah, actually, we had been thinking about it, um, wow. you know." And so we started our um, Facebook page, our social media pages, and we started getting a lot of inboxes, a lot of comments on different posts we made mm -hmm. um, about marriage and relationships. And then so we started seeing some of the issues that were out there, and we said, "Well, we found a lot of people just don't know how to do marriage, so let's kind of lay out." the best way to do marriage. And we want to make it a quick, easy book to kind of read, you know, nothing that kind of just overwhelms you, but quick, simple tips to help you. Right, and, and I would tell you that, I mean, that. this is definitely, <laughs> a, 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 I could see that it's, it's a great, easy read. Because, you know, I mean, I, I grew up in the, in, the, in the old school church where you, you have those weeks of premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I say, I, I got married the first time at 22. I would never advise that to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've met, you know, a handful of marriages that got married young and they stayed married. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, typically, because you think you know yourself, Absolutely. right? And so those little sessions, because they're group sessions, mm -hmm. right? And so you're so excited about the wedding <laughs> that you're just willing to just overlook everything. Mm -hmm. You're like, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> after you were like, that was a telltale sign. <laughs> um, and so, you know, how would you, do you, one, do you feel that premarital counseling, one, um, today should should look different than it was maybe back in the day? Because, you know, like I, I kind of looked up some questions that you should be asking your mate. Mm -hmm. um, that especially if you were raised in church and churched, mm -hmm. it, you wouldn't ask because mm -hmm. you shouldn't be talking about that. But, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that it should be different. Me and Rona always talk about the premarital counseling that we got before we got married and just how we feel like it wasn't beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at it now and what we offer to co couples that we coach before they get married, it's totally different because roles and responsibilities are different. Mm -hmm. The demands on our lives are very different. The expectations are um, very different. And But I think that if you lay that foundation before marriage and you have that open communication, then that will help you continue to grow you know, in your marriage. So absolutely, right. we encourage anybody to do some type of, it, it doesn't even have to be a whole year, but if you do some type of um, coaching or counseling, mm -hmm. you can get to really open up with your um, with your significant other and mm -hmm. really see, you know, some of the areas that you may have to face, because we're all going to have to face those those right. battleship Sometimes. moments that we call them. Right. Yeah, and you're going to have to work through those issues. I know, so. <laughs> we're going to talk about love boat <laughs> battleship and cruise, but we have a caller, and let's just take, a, take this first caller, um, are you ready to handle a call? Let's go. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, so let's see if we can get the caller. Uh, caller, please say your name and where you're calling from. Oh. Are you there? You're not saying that though. Oh, maybe he's on mute. <laughs> so we'll, we, will, we will get back to that caller. In fact, let's go ahead and take a... Oh, hello, oh, caller. Call your name. Can All right, you know what? We will go to break, and we'll be right back. You, you are listening to uh, Married by God, Relationships, Etc., Love, <laughs> Boat, Battleship, and Cruise with the Harrises. We'll be right back. You are listening to One Way Praise Radio, Voice in the Gospel. Good? Yeah, we're good. 
relationships right now because you know um, I, I always um, if I'm given an opportunity to help a young college student um, and someone that is doing something really great then I want to do that um, we have the pleasure to have Miss Bethune Cookman University 2016 in the studio with us Amber Jazz and Monty Petrus yes. right yes. welcome welcome she is a uh, mass communications major um, and within her field, she's actively involved in several activities, and I thought I was busy in college. <laughs> Vision Student Chapter of the Florida Public Relations and the Voice of the Wildcats, where her focus is learning on uh, about the use of production equipment. It's very good. We can, when, when you get back from school, you come over here. Yes. Um, operations, um, visual, oral aesthetics. Wow, producing... Directing, editing, what don't you do? Screenwriting? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you are a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, yes, yes. correct? Um, but I saw something in, maybe it, it, it wasn't on here, but you eventually want to open up your Hello. own funeral home. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay, so now how do we get all of this into then becoming a funeral director? Um... Well, honestly, thank you so much for allowing me to be on your station. It's our pleasure. Um, but the only reason how I got into funeral is dealing with my father. You know, he's into the insurance business, and he's in the funeral business. So basically how I got it was the motivation from him. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's how actually I met your father as well, and he does a very good job. So you have a great, a great role model thank there. You so, so tell us about the ebony.com. Um, I was so excited because I I love to vote because I'm very competitive, and so tell us about um, again how how did you become Miss Bethune Cookman and you know what what is, has that done for you this year? Okay, um, so how I got to become Miss Bethune Cookman University um, was actually I had I was Miss Junior last year. And so I, I was in my room and I kept telling my dad, like, I really want to run for this. But, you know, I didn't really, I was nervous. So um, he just kept telling me, pray about it, pray about it. So that's what I did. And um, 
I went for it and I decided to run. So when I ran, I ran against seven girls. Wow. And so um, when I ran for the position, um, the day of campaign, um, my dad told me, do not be moved by anything. So if I lost, you know, he just told me just to be steady. So I was really, very nervous, but I was excited at the same time. So when I won, um, they had told me that it was a runner up. So I was like, oh man, so like, I'm gonna have to run again. So mm -hmm. then they went back and looked at the votes and the votes um, were, I had won over a hundred votes. So that wow. was awesome. So my journey through Miss Bethune Cooking University um, has been very amazing. Like this year I got to go to Hall of Fame in Atlanta to mm. compete with, um, I've done a lot of networking, um, breast cancer events, Wonderful. a lot of stuff that has um, touched the community as mm -hmm. well as my school. So that was awesome. Um, to be in Ebony has been an amazing opportunity <laughs> that the school has given me as well as Ebony. And so um, for that, what you have to do basically is um, I'm competing against 70 queens. Mm -hmm. And so the top 10 only get to be featured in Ebony Magazine. So you have to um, vote three times a day, um, go on the link, uh, you would go to ebony.com and you would click under and HBCU Queens. And then after HBCU Queens, you'll go to um, Amber Jazz, Miss Bethune Cookman University. You click three times. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're on the way to making sure that we can get in the top ten. Well, awesome. I, and, and I love that yeah. your that your platform um, is big on promoting female em empowerment to live with purpose. Yes. And so how do you feel um, that this journey um, adds into your purpose? Well, um, thank you for that. Um, I just feel that honestly, like, that the motivation that my dad has given me following God and knowing that we're exactly where I'm supposed to be at, I feel that I'll be destined for my purpose when it comes. Amen. So I'm just ready for to see something mm -hmm. manifest. And just this year coming up, I'm just excited for plenty of opportunities. Well, That's great. okay, folks, That's so now, now listen. Everyone on Facebook Live, YouTube, online, tunein.com, all over the world, it doesn't matter where you are, all over the world, go to ebony.com and then scroll down, like I'm on it right now, and you go to the HBCU Campus Queens 2016, and then you will find Amber's page, it's, it says Amber Jazz Petrus, Bethune Cookman U University. All her bio is there, so you can see more about how beautiful she is. And click three times, and then I need you to get 5,000 friends to do the same uh -huh. thing. And so <laughs> just ask everyone that you know, wherever you live in the world, please just go on and let us help such um, just an empowering young woman who's just, I believe, on a path to greatness, um, to get in, into the top 10. Listen, I believe in number one. So um, so guys, again, go to ebony.com, go down to um, HBCU Campus Queens 2016, and then you'll find Amber's name, and, and it has also her college, so, but um, Amber Jazz, just like that's all you have to look for, is Amber Jazz, um, and, then, and then Bethune Cookman U, and um, she has a, has a burgundy dress, so you'll find her, but click three times, share it with everyone that you know, and let's help her continue to do great things in school and out of school. And I certainly look forward to seeing um, your journey into being a funeral director. I bet you they have like the most smart funeral home in the world with all of her technology all experience. Right. <laughs> They'll be like, touch this, go here, go there. Anyway, you are listening to the Alice Shane Show on One Way Praise Radio. We will be right back. Go and vote. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks, awesome. thanks for coming. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet awesome. you. Good well. handshake, too. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Yay. <coughs> Thank you so much. I'll keep on spreading Thank the word. You. Thank you. Yeah. Let's take a picture.
Shane Harmon. And together we are Alice, Alice Shane. Shane. So we are talking about all things marriage, relationships, um, with coaches, um, I, I, coaches extraordinaire, married by God, <laughs> Ronald and Rachel Harris. Right. Um, they've been married for 10, 10 years yeah, now? 10 years. But, but best friends for 21 years. Yeah, yeah. So you oh. think they know each other? I think so. So <laughs> we, we, we talked about before the break about, you know, being able to ask Mm -hmm. those really personal questions um, and being able to take it and that's what you deem, you know, or as, as part of um, in in the blueprint mm -hmm. of being successful in marriage. So let's let's actually take a caller. Um, caller, let's see, first caller. I know he's been holding for a while. Can you see it over there? Yep. All right, cool. We will... It, says mute, so. it, it still All says right. muted. Oh, caller, caller, first caller, please say your name and where you're calling from. You're there, somebody. <laughs> I see you. If, if you have your phone on mute, you, you might want to hit it off mute. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? While they are, I don't know, Courtney, can we try, try the second one? They both are. They're just not saying anything. Oh, okay. Well, then until they discuss, <laughs> they want to ask a question, let us Either. just go forward. Um, okay, so let's start with um, what do you, what's what's the beginning of the of the of the blueprint mm -hmm. that makes it successful? What's what's the what's the foundation of it? Well, I think the beginning of the blueprint is simply God. I right. mean, okay. it's, 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 it's Oh, okay, we got a caller. Go. There you go, caller. Please say your name and where you're calling from. Um, this is Aaron Callen. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome, Aaron Callen. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. What's your What's your question for Ronald and Rachel Harris? Keep it clean. Well, let's see. I'm calling exactly about um relationship advice. Okay. Ask away. Um. 
Let's see, Austin, like, say if you're in a, a relation, a long distance relationship, and how would you, like, maintain that on a daily basis besides communication and just building up a strong relationship with that person until you actually meet that person? Oh, that's good. Hmm. Wow, well, I would say, hey, Aaron. So I would say uh, definitely long-distance relationships can be a lot more challenging than having this person face-to-face with you at all times. I think first you start with um, communicating about what you both need um, from each other while mm-hmm. you're long distance. So if someone if someone feels like they need more conversation um, instead of the texting or they want to, you know, hear from you, so many uh, social media outlets we can use to communicate now you can facetime you can do just different things to feel connected so i think just discussing what you need to feel connected will be the number one thing to do to be able to keep that um relationship going and to keep yourselves connected to each other mm. that's good. Most, most definitely i actually I, I really feel what you're saying i mean it's it's been like that for the past couple months i mean like we've been on and off and everything it's just like Sometimes it feels one sided because I'm a man I'm a man of communication. Like yeah. I don't have a problem communicating but in uh but on her stand she has a little bit trouble doing that sometimes. Like, cause she gets all emotional and whatnot and just locks herself away and won't express her feelings mm. on the uh, on the back burner. Okay. Mm. Well, babe, I think you should touch on that because <laughs> because we have this discussion all the time, and it always amazes me that men say women are emotional, which is a hundred percent true. Um, but I think it's mm-hmm. the way you deal with the emotion that totally shifts the way you communicate. Yeah, and I was going to add to that. I think it's definitely going to be um, how you deal with her emotion. Uh, or maybe you guys can um, maybe find a different way of communicating. Mm-hmm. Maybe through text. Yeah, you right. Mm-hmm. That works because uh, I, I, if you don't mind me asking, what's the distance that you guys are away from each other? Like, uh, I can say from here in New York. Wow. Oh, oh, that's that's the distance. Distance. Yeah, well, I think it ain't, from, it ain't too. It ain't too bad. I mean, <laughs> it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't too bad. I mean, you can always get on the flight and fly down here and there. Yeah, you could. You can, so that's what I would say. I think relationships are all about what you're willing to put in and your commitment to it. Exactly. And so if she's exactly. getting, I think if she's getting emotional, most times women will get emotional. That's the way that we show that we need a little more attention, a little more. Can I add to Amen. that? Amen. Um, the thing that I like to tell men that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. <laughs> yes. And so that's we right. can. Venus, well, there you go. <laughs> that's right. A lot of times, you know, women like for us to read their mind and, mm-hmm. you know, we're not built yeah, that way. Yeah, right. And so, I think, you know, it'll, it'll come along. You just keep working at it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, that well, thank, was a great question. Go ahead, no, I was just going to say thank you. Go ahead, go ahead. Thanks, well, thank you. Thank you, Aaron, for your input. And, uh, you know, that was a great question. And uh, I wish the best with your relationship. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm definitely, Sharon. All right. Thanks for calling in. Take good care. God bless. Are right, you welcome. You're y'all take it easy. You too. Thank you. Don't be a stranger. All right. Well, I won't. <laughs> Let's see if our if our next caller is ready to ask his or her question. Caller, are you there? Please say your name and, and where you're calling from. I think they got shot. So. <laughs> I know he's been there a while. He or she, I don't know who that is. But all right, so um, I love this. In, in fact, today I was asked how I, I felt about this, but you know, the issue of Submission. Mm -hmm. And so the title of your chapter is Submit to Whom? Mm -hmm. A Wife's Mm -hmm. Submission. Let's talk about that. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, because I think so many people um, get caught up on, and especially women today, Mm -hmm. maybe the the modern woman today, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm my own woman and da 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 da. Mm -hmm. And, um, And I personally don't think that. The word of God has changed, Mm-mm. and so give us give us your 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 perspective. Well, you know it's always interesting when we talk about submission, and when I bring it to um, just different people that we coach or different women, I I always bring it from the perspective that we all submit in life in different areas. We met, we submit when we uh, when we get on the job. We submit when we're in church leadership or we're just participating yep. in any religion. We submit when we're in sports or different things. And so all throughout our lives we submit. The thing about it is you understand what you're submitting to in these different things. Uh, 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 
from. And so when you're submitting to these different things, you understand what the what the mission is and what you're submitting to. Right. The problem in marriage with submission is a lot of people don't understand what they're submitting to. The mission is not clear. What we're about is not clear. The vision is not clear for what we stand for as a marriage and what we stand for as a union. And so me and Ron always talk about having a marriage vision for your relationship. Just like you have a vision for your career, you have right. a vision for your life. You should have a marriage vision. And when you have that vision, it's easy to submit to what I know God is about <coughs> and what I know my husband is about. So if it's clear what we're trying to do together, it's no issue to submit to him because yeah. I know your leadership is taking us down this route. Amen. 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 And, and your thoughts, brother? Um, yeah, my thoughts are this. Um, I, I like to tell men that if you don't submit to God, you can't expect for your wife to submit to you. Mm-hmm. When you look at the word submit, that means to go under a mission. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have a mission, you can't expect for your wife or your significant other to go under you. Yeah. To follow you. Yeah. And we always tell people that when you look at submission, it talks about God being the head of Christ, Christ being the head of man, man the head of woman. Right. It's an order to it. So you mm-hmm. just can't skip out the order and say, hey, bow down to me today. And you're not bowing down to anybody. You're right. not submitting yourself. So it always starts with the head of the marriage, the husband. And usually we say if you have an issue with submission, usually the husband is not submitted to Christ. Mm. Now, see, when I was in the military, we have um, the chain of command. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind there of you go. Yep. About, that's it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But, um, my two cents in, on this is... Um, <laughs> Give us your two cents. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that a marriage or even a relationship um, that has progressed mm-hmm. is about sacrifice, absolutely. tolerance, and compromise. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? And absolutely. above all, communication. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Well, let's see if this right. caller is ready. One more time. Caller, are you there? And please say your name and where you're calling from. (laughs) Caller? Hello, hello. So we'll put them back on mute and just going to give you a future warning. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to bring you up. So be ready if you are listening still. Um, And we'll, let's see if he comes up or she, I don't know who it is. Um, but okay, so we talked about submitting. Now let's just talk about communication. Caller, are you there? Okay, so I mean, obviously when you're first dating, mm-hmm. right, it's that, you know, like you put forth your best and absolutely right and then you go for the you, Oscar. Right. <laughs> and then yeah, as you grow you like and you progress. Um, but in in the in the successful blueprint, um, let's talk about the role that a good communication takes because when we first met, mm-hmm. our first day or our first 10, 15 days I mean, it was all by phone, mm. or, or text, or things like that. We have another call. Okay, so, um, so let's let's just talk about how that plays a part um, in um, you know, from going from dating to maybe courtship to marriage. Uh, how communication plays yes. a part. Well, I think uh, communication is important, period. We say that's the number one thing. If you master that um, in your marriage, you will be able to uh, get through anything because at the root of everything is the ability to communicate about it, to get to a resolution about it. And so I think when you're dating, that's the perfect opportunity to be able to see if you're with somebody that can effectively communicate. Like we say there's only two ways to communicate in our book. That's effectively or ineffectively. Right. There's no other way. And so you got to be able to communicate effectively in order to have a strong relationship or a strong marriage. And it just comes up, it just comes from being able to talk as friends. I think that's the number one gen, getting, getting to the genuineness of friendship, just having those casual conversations about everything under the sun. That's what you're typically able to do when you start dating. It's like just a free for all conversation type thing. Then when you start to um, progress a little bit, you know, masks start coming down. Sometimes we want to confront those things. Sometimes we don't because we don't want to mess up the relationship. But you got to be able to talk about those things because mm-hmm. in marriage, once you're there, you got to be able to work it out. Right. And so it's important to just be able to communicate about everything. I love it. And I, and Effectively just, and, and ineffectively. And I love think it. um, just being honest up front. Yeah. You know, when you first started, start dating, if you just be honest and bring whatever you have to the table, mm-hmm. 
just lay it out on the table. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about those issues in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's hard for a lot of people, though. It is. Because, you know, based on what they've gone through in relationships before, they've learned what to do, what not to do, mm -hmm. how to hide things, mm -hmm. and so forth. So there's a lot of people that, that that's tough. Yeah, it well, is. No, I get it. It is, it is, and I think, but but I think, like Ronald said, it's important to be able at some point to have that truth, and where you find marriage's struggle is there's no point that we ever come to the table and we're like, look, that, okay, that 10-pound bag you have, I got my 20-pound bag, let's dump it out together, let's sift through this, and let's pick up the pieces and see what we're going to take and what yeah. we're, we're going to discard, because everybody brings baggage, sure. and so you have to decide in a relationship what you're going to pick up and work out through the course of your marriage. That's yeah. all it comes That's down it. to. Everybody has that. Right. And if, and if, and if you're not comfortable with, you know, like, what I love about is that we've been able to, like, we, we could talk about our past. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's what, it's, it's, that's what it is, our past. Mm -hmm. And so, and even I go, what, this. what? Yeah. And, and we, but it's, but it's nothing that, because everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, everyone has a story. Yeah. Um, we have a new caller on hold. Um, let's see. <laughs> Caller, please say your name and where you're calling from. Hello, hi, this is Charmaine. Hi, Allison, Shane, Rachel, and Ronald. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> Fabulous show. So, I was, I, I'm actually calling, driving through downtown Atlanta, but I, um, this just came across my mind when you guys said something about submission. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the particular couple where? Um, the woman will say, well, you know, I wear the pants in my family, where the man may seem a little subdued and the woman is extremely strong. Um, and, you know, I've seen people live like that for years. What do you say to those kind of situations or if you ever had a question like that? Well, yeah, so we get a lot of that. But I think at the root of it, I always start with, I understand that piece, but how has that been working for you? Because at the point that you come to us with the uh, to help to help your marriage, there's an issue. And so, if the issue is that the husband is feeling like you're not letting him lead as a strong woman, then you have to decide whether or not you're you want to work on being able to pull back so that um, he can pull forward. And we always tell men. A woman doesn't give you the right to lead. Like a husband doesn't, we don't, we don't grant a husband a right to lead. His position alone, his, his natural position in life in a marriage is to lead. And so a woman doesn't let anybody lead, doesn't let a man lead, a man leads. And so, now you may have some tug of war about the leadership when you have a strong woman, but you have to be consistent about your role and your place in the marriage and the relationship. And so I would just advise them definitely to understand the order because typically, like we said before, when you find out that things are not aligned, you can always find that the order is not being followed, that God is not being represented daily and weekly in their lives and in their marriage, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. mm. Really good. Absolutely. Go ahead, Ron, and then I'll make a comment. No, I'm just going to take it back to Genesis. Um, anytime that the order is being broken, that's where you're going to have issues at. Even when you go back to Genesis, uh, when you look at Adam and Eve, and the serpent went to uh, Eve, mm -hmm. and she started having a conversation with Eve. If you can, if you read it well, he deceived her. Mm -hmm. But if you would have went to the Adam... You want to have that happen. It reminds me of my kids. When they want something, uh, they always try to sweet talk their mom. Mm -hmm. So they'll switch the order in which we go. Yeah. Wow. And so likewise, yeah. in that situation, when the order is broken, you're always going to have a different outcome. Yeah. And we always, tell, we always tell couples, you know, that at the end of things... The genesis, um, anytime that the order is being broken, that's where you're going to have issues at. Even when you go back to Genesis... Uh, when you look at Adam and Eve and the serpent went to uh, Eve mm -hmm. and she started having a conversation with Eve, if you can, if you read it well, he deceived her. Mm -hmm. But if you would have went to the Adam, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have had that happen. It reminds me of my kids. When they want something, uh, they always try to sweet talk their mom. Mm -hmm. So they'll switch the order in which they go. Yeah. Wow. And so likewise, yeah. in that situation, when the order is broken, you're always going to have a different outcome. Yeah. And we always, tell, we always tell couples, you know, that 
at the end of things, but you may never thrive in it. And so we want to have thriving marriages. Yes. We don't want to just exist and live in a situation. We want to thrive in that situation. And I, I think agree. until you really do it God's way, you will never experience the fullness of it, you know, to really uh, live the way God intended us to live. So yeah. I think some people don't have the strength to get a divorce either. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They, they're, just, wow. they're satisfied. With, well, they're not satisfied, but they just don't want to go through with mm -hmm. Breaking the up process. the process, mm -hmm. in the marriage. And they yeah. just live, just they exist. Well, they exist. They find right. their own way to live in the marriage. Right. And I think, you know, the whole thing about, um, because even with us, you know, I have my children and mm -hmm. he has his son, but I've, you know, um, and it, it doesn't matter that, in my perspective, that um, he is not the father of my children, but as we marry, He's still the head of our home, mm -hmm. and and in teaching your children about you know respect and submission to authority, that's important. But as we become you know taking two families and becoming one, absolutely. So, absolutely. Well, thank you, caller. We appreciate thank that. You, Charmaine. Thank you, Charmaine. Great questions. Thank you, thank you guys for the great advice. I appreciate it. Keep doing what you're doing. Awesome show, Allison and Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. All right, we have another caller coming in. This is from Philly. Caller, uh -huh. please say your name and where you're calling oh. from. Okay. Caller? Hello? Oh, hey, hi. Hi. I, I didn't even know I was. <laughs> I didn't even know that my uh, dad didn't work like this. So my name is Catherine. I'm actually uh, friends of Ronald and Rachel. Hi, uh, I'm hey. on the phone with my husband, Robert. And I didn't even know you all knew <laughs> I was going to be called out. But hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you just want to listen, then we can put you back on mute. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I was just going to kind of listen in. I, I, we're, okay. we're, kind of, we're kind of students of Ronald and Rachel anyway, so oh. we, we're, we already follow them. So we're just listening in, though. Awesome. Well, we oh. appreciate Thank you calling you in. We're fun. going to put you back on mute. <laughs> and we have another caller waiting, I believe, or uh, unless it's the same one from before. Looks like she called back in. Maybe she, she called back in. Questions. All right. Well, before we take that other... Okay. Caller? Did, did you have another question? No. Okay. So we'll just put them both back on mute. Um, so, okay. So now let's just get to this. I mean, clearly you have to come back, okay? Because there's just so much. Um, but let's just talk about the three repetitive phases of marriage. Love Boat, Battleship, and Cruise. Mm -hmm. Bring us through those. I'll let Ronald start because those was Ronald's three stages. And he threw them out there when we were talking. I was like, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, That's cool. um, I like that. That's really cool. You know, when I came I up with the uh, love boat, the love boat is the um, phase of marriage. It's like the beginning stage whereby um, nothing could go wrong mm -hmm. when you're in the love boat. Mm -hmm. You know, love is in the air. Yeah. You know, exciting and new. Yeah. Right. Exciting. You know, the sparkle is still in your eyes. You know, uh, <laughs> The sexual piece is heightened <laughs> to the highest level. And that's just the part where you really enjoy. That's like the honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, your wife says she wants something, you buy it. Your husband <laughs> says he wants something, you get it. It's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, the battleship is one of my favorite stages because I think this is the phase where you get to know who this person really is. Mm -hmm. This is the phase where you get to push to see how far you can take uh, a, a an argument, mm -hmm. uh, or any situation that you might be going through. Mm -hmm. And so this is the phase where you get to see the real submission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the building phase. It's the building phase. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, the, it's the best part of, um, out of all the phases, I think this is the critical one. Okay. Um, the cruise is a stage where you done pretty much been through it all. You know, you done throwed everything, that all the baggage off board. Um, mm -hmm. Both of you guys know when to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't win every argument. You can't mm -hmm. win every battle. Mm -hmm. And so now you just learn how to just fall back and relax mm -hmm. and enjoy the ride. And enjoy the ride, yeah. 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 And you I have mastered that. communication at that point. And cool. another key thing is that these phases recycle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. throughout your marriage. You know, we've been married 10 years, and we've probably been through that stage. Uh, those phases 
maybe like 15 or 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, you know, the wonderful thing about it that we talk about in the book with the battleship is understanding that some battleship moments we usher into our lives, some things just happen to us. Yeah, right. Like you may experience a situation where you lose a child, you lose a parent. Those right. are hard moments where somebody gets ill in the marriage, and right. those are hard times that you have to deal with. And they can bring on some stress, some frustration, yes. some issues mm-hmm. in your marriage. But some situations we usher in, like infidelity or, right. you know, anger issues that we don't want to resolve, those mm-hmm. kinds of things we place inside right. our marriage. And you still have to battle those things out to get to a place. But the, the beautiful thing about the battleship phase is that every battle that you resolve is a building block. And so it just strengthens your marriage and helps you lay the foundation of your marriage and grow and move beyond if you resolve them correctly. Some people allow them to destroy them and they never get to see that cruise phase where we can kind of really just agree to disagree right. and it doesn't change how we love each other, how we grow together, or anything like that. So. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, so now, you know, so now... I- I will have a name for that thing. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, clearly, <laughs> so you, know. you put your battleship over there, <laughs> mine over here. I'm going to, I'm going to sink you. your battleship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so, and, um, and then let's just talk, because I love what you said, because being an entrepreneur, you know, we, we always talk about, you know, vision boards and, mm-hmm. and, and, and vision statements. Now, I I have incorporated a vision statement as as, as part of my whole life. Mm-hmm. So that means personal business. But I love when you talk about, you know, as far as a marriage vision mm-hmm. and writing it out and making it plain. And, and I, I mean, I can speak frankly for us. You know, this is not our first marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, and... You know, um, each of our last marriages ended differently, mm-hmm. um, and so, and I, I had prayed prior to meeting him that Father, if you chose to bless me again, mm-hmm. Lord, I want this to last fifty plus years. Mm-hmm. Like I want us, us to truly, because I thought I was gonna grow old mm-hmm. with my late husband, mm-hmm. and it just didn't, and that wasn't God's plan, and mm-hmm. and so I, I said, uh, uh-uh, uh, I, you know. I'm, I'm three years shy of 50. I, I don't plan on doing this all, you know, again. And I think because we're in that late 40s range, that when we first met, we were able just to really just talk about stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, and I knew in my mind what I wasn't going to tolerate. Mm-hmm. Same here. And I knew in my mind from the onset, you know, and, and this is not to sound, you know, um, uppity, mm-hmm. or, but I had showed you... I knew I was the prize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I knew you get the full package with Alice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there, I have flaws, but you get the full package with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and just because of social media, like I see how some, mm-hmm. and I can only speak for women, how they just, they, they chase after men. And yes. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, like that word, they're thirsty. And, yeah. this is, and, and I was like, I'm too old for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and I and I just knew, and but I postured myself and not... In, in a way that was defensive at, at all, but I knew if this was going to be, then he was going to pursue me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think the, the wonderful thing that Ronna always tells me is that men are naturally like, have a natural predatory type of spirit. Uh-huh. So they naturally are like hunters. They like to go after things. And he was like, so even for women, if a man truly wants to, uh, seek that relationship or grow that relationship, he will pursue you. And so I think nowadays, like you said, with social media, you see so much of, so much, so many women feeling like they're running out of time or feeling pressured to try to, uh, you know, make that relationship move forward, that they're just being a a lot more aggressive. They know what they want. So it's like, I know what I want. Let me, let's, let's do this, you know, and that's not really always how things should work out. But if it works for you, it works for you. But a lot of times I think when you do something, you said you knew you were the prize. And I think when you know you are the prize, then you're willing to sit on the mantle as a trophy and wait for that pursuit to happen. You're not out there desperate feeling like you got to make it happen. Right. You know, you just said something that's really profound. You, you, you said relationship. A lot of guys, if if they're a real man, they will put the time in mm-hmm. to have a relationship. But a lot of men out there don't want relationship. Exactly. No, they just want to get the cookie. Exactly. And, they, and there's exactly. a lot of women out there that will do it. Exactly. But, right. the, you know, on yeah. both sides, they're not marriage material. They're not mature enough. Mm-hmm. To really understand that, hey, it takes a little more than that for a marriage. Absolutely. Yeah, successful. And just to add to what you were saying is, um, cookies are sweet. 
<laughs> and so who don't want something sweet? <laughs> right. You, you get cavities. <laughs> and that's over a period of time. Uh -huh. And after you have grown old, right. you realize that your teeth is now falling out. <laughs> instead of going that's for the right. full course meal, the mm -hmm. full package, like you said, right. the full yeah. package. Yeah. And so, I mean, well, sin is sweet. Stuff. You know, we don't like to admit it, but anytime mm -hmm. you're committing sin, sin, it feels good. Mm -hmm. It's That's not true. good for you, but mm -hmm. it feels good. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you get something out of that moment. That's, I think that's why it's so important to understand what you want. Like, I think something you said with, with the age that you guys are now, late 40s, you know, you both knew what you wanted. Mm -hmm. You knew what you were going to tolerate, what you weren't going to tolerate, some, some pretty much your standards, you were set. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, when you're young, and like you said, you got married at 22, you were never advised mm -hmm. about it. We got married mm -hmm. at 26. And we talk about this in the book, too, growing together without growing apart. Right. That's the piece that so happens in marriage. It. You have to grow individually, but you can't grow apart as that's you right. grow individually. And that's, that's, that's right. where people get lost. Because then you wake up one day, it's like, who is this person? I don't even know you anymore. You don't even know me. Right. You know, so you got to allow that room for growth, but you also still have to have your standards. When you're trying to get into a marriage or relationship, what aren't you willing to deal with? Right. What are you willing to bend on? What sacrifices are you willing to make? Because at some point in time, you're going to get called on those things if right. you're looking to have an unto-death marriage. Mm -hmm. You're going to get called on the sacrifices you're willing to make. Mm -hmm. right. So now, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I think, you know, when you're young... Mm -hmm. You don't even know what standards are. It's true. Right? Okay. right? I mean, you have your standards in your mind. Oh, no. She's fine, you know, whatever. But uh -huh. those are different standards. Oh, absolutely. Than what you'll accept and what you won't. And, you know, you have you don't even know yourself mm -hmm. when you're young. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people that get married young, I mean, yeah, a lot of times it doesn't last. Yeah. And it, it's not your fault. Yeah. It's no, just you got to grow. Just, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. I, gotta, I thought I knew everything yourself. at 22. You don't know why. Exactly. You don't know um, anything. You got to you gotta, um, talk to people that are have made it through mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so 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 a couple like us would you for the for the marriage vision would you suggest do we do we each sit down and write our vision or do we come together and write it come how, together. how do you like do you start it out together mm -hmm. or do you both sit down and kind of put things out and then you bring that together what well, it's definitely something you do together because you guys will be one. And so the vision has to be something that you both believe in, agree upon, that you know. Like our vision is very simple, just to live our life in a way that's pleasing to Christ and inspires others in marriage. That's simply our marriage vision. So at any point that we find ourselves getting frustrated in our marriage, we understand that at the at the, at, at the um, heart of our marriage is to inspire others, is to live it out in the way that God intended us to live it out for the world. You know, and so it always brings us back to a place of sacrifice for each other, love for each other. So it's just something, yeah, definitely together that you agree upon. It doesn't have to be long, drawn out, just short, simple, that you'll always have in the back of your mind in those tough times to get you back to that love boat. Phase in your marriage, yeah. We gotta Love check boat. out your blueprint. <laughs> Battleship <laughs> cruise. Well, listen, we because we started a new segment called, called Dear Al Shane, I expect after this show <laughs> that we're gonna get a bunch of these different types of questions. Yeah. And so we would love to have you back. Um, please tell everyone how they can find you on social media and all of that. Well, you can find us on all the social media outlets as Married by God, um, or you can go to our Married by God page, www.marriedbygod.org, and you can subscribe to us, and you can get all the information about what's going on with us, where we are, and what we're doing um, on Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can catch us. YouTube. Okay, so now, and how do people, um, when they want to go buy your book, where do they go? We have a link on our um Website and you also can go on Amazon and just search for Married by God, God's Blueprint to a Successful Marriage. For those of you that are watching, this is what the book looks like. You definitely want to get a copy. We are excited. We definitely will have the Harrises back. Um, yes, so start sure. to send in those Dear Alice Shane um, questions and in the subject you can put either married by God or just relationship or baby mama drama but, <laughs> yeah, we'll um, that but then I'm there and then you could also just tell us that if you don't want your name or city yeah. to be shared that's fine too so thank you for coming thank oh, please thank you. come yeah. back we would um, love to. again you, this is our last show of 2016 mm -hmm. we're excited about what one way praise radio will be doing in, in 2017 look out that's for some new stuff. shows coming on um, new places to find us. So uh, don't forget, you, we'll, we'll still be winning, dreaming, and believing with Alice Shane um, as in 2017 as we 
get together our blueprint or God's, God's blueprint for us. We got some work to do. <laughs> we're we're not that far off. No, no, we got to sneak through this blueprint thing. Don't push no, me to the paddle ship. Okay, oh, already, already. Oh, already. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening. You've been listening to One Way Praise Radio, the Alice Shane Show, Voice of the Gospel. We'll see you next week.